Hello, this is Adam from Now Gamer, and I uh, recently played Titanfall. Um, but I thought rather than do a video explaining why I like it, why I don't like it, um, I opened the floor to you guys. Uh, asked you guys on Twitter and Facebook and uh, on the forum um, what it was you wanted to know about Titanfall. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the, the topics that came up, um, some of the things you wanted to know, um, and hopefully you get a better idea of what Titanfall is and whether you should get it. A lot of you wanted to know about mods. Um, the beta that I had access to, I assume, is going to be the same for the closed beta that they're currently um, preparing. Um, it had access to three modes, technically four, um, but the fourth was more of a random uh, selection of all the three modes available. Um, you had the typical team deathmatch, you had um, domination mode, which they called hardpoint, um, and you had uh, last man standing, which they named last titan standing. Now they're pretty self-explanatory obviously, um, team deathmatch obviously requiring a certain amount of kills to win, uh, domination requiring you to capture points on the map, um, and team, uh, titan, last titan standing obviously the uh, same as last man standing. But what is interesting is that uh, team deathmatch and domination both start with uh, both teams uh, on foot, so you don't have your titans to start with. Um, this works, I'll explain that, that a little bit later on how titans work, but this basically means there's a, a kind of gradual give and take to each of the map matches that you play. Kind of like a, an arms race for, for the first person to get that titan. Th there were no extra modes outside of that, I'm not sure if this is the same as the final uh, game, so whether there's going to be more, more modes or not, or maybe some release this DLC, I don't yet know about that. Um, as it stands, the beta that people will be getting access to will have uh, these three modes and the fourth, as I say, which um, is a, a random selection of mods uh, and just picks between whichever everyone's advances. Additionally, there was a, a tutorial. Um, some of you have asked if there was a training mode or a tutorial. Um, I didn't see any kind of bot v bot training mode, but there was a tutorial that went step by step explaining some of the details of free running and some of the titans that you can play and how, how you play them and some of the core mechanics involved behind that. Um, it did it did enough, it didn't last too long, it was about 5-10 minutes um, gameplay but it did enough to, to explain the, the intricacies of, of the systems and, and work well but again I don't know if there's any, any training mode in the bots. One of the more popular questions that kept popping up was uh, about how the balancing between humans and mechs work. Um, obviously your mechs are, are quite formidable opponents, they, they take a lot of damage, they deal a lot of damage. Um, but I didn't find that the humans were ever overpowered. There, there is a, a, a scale difference, so humans can go inside buildings and use that to their advantage and can basically avoid taking any damage um, from, from the titans that uh, they're, they're up against. Uh, most titans, or at least the, of the two uh, bodies that I, I saw, uh, they all had weak points that are highlighted to the human players. So um, if you are looking for, you, you, each person has a, a titan weapon, anti-titan weapon if you will. Um, that could be a rocket launcher or it could be a, a high powered cannon rifle. Uh, and that will do more damage to the titans than it will to, to human players. And you can use that by attacking from within buildings to, uh, to destroy titans. So they are vulnerable to certain, certain types of attacks. Uh, and additionally, you can um, jump on top of them, which is uh, called in game as rodeoing. Um, and if you do that, you can then start shooting into the mech. Um, the pilots will be warned of this, so they can hop out and just shoot you with whatever weapon they have to hand. But um, for the most part, there are advantages to being a human, to being a titan. With that said, obviously the titans are quite powerful, so as soon as you can get hold of one of those, it does give you the advantage. I suppose the best way of thinking about it was that I never really felt intimidated by the Titans being on the match. So even if I might have lost mine, uh, perhaps it was destroyed or whatever, um, I never really felt overpowered by the fact that I was up against the Titan. I could weave in and out of buildings. I had the obviously the, the mobility with the free running. So I didn't really ever feel overpowered if there was a Titan on the match. Uh, and I always had a way of, of uh, dealing damage and sometimes even destroying them if they were preoccupied.
going into a bit more detail about the titans themselves, uh, some of you asked about kind of restrictions uh, you had on actually using those. Um, for the traditional game mode, so Team Deathmatch and Domination, um, you had a countdown. Um, and that's the same for everyone, regardless of what side you're on or, or who you're playing as. Um, but you can actually lower the countdown by killing people on the map. Uh, these can be either human players or AI minions, um, which you already know about. Um, the AI, they'll, they'll walk around the map, they will attack people, but they're not very strong, they're not very capable. Um, but they do knock off a second or two, depending on, on the quality of the AI. Um, from your countdown, so they are they are worth hunting down and, and killing because if you get a squad of them, you'll knock off five seconds, and it is a race to get that titan. Uh, human players will will knock off a few more seconds on on the countdown, uh, but by and large, if you if you want to get that titan first, you're going to have to kill as many people and minions as you possibly can. Once the countdown's finished, you can actually summon the, the titan in, and this is activated by yourself. So. Uh, if you don't feel you're in a comfortable situation, you don't want to waste that Titan. Um, you can actually wait and use it whenever you're in a more secure uh, location. Once the Titan's summoned, it'll actually stay there until you actually embark on it. So it is a stationary object and it can be destroyed once its uh, shield has gone down. At that point, once you do embark, you'll get a new countdown. Uh, and you can stay around in your Titan for as long as, as, long as you can keep it alive. Uh, it's not invincible, so you likely will lose it at some point. But it does work on, on the fact that if, if you get that Titan first, you're going to have the advantage and you're going to be able to knock the extra seconds off your second countdown. Additionally, there's a feature called Burn Cards, and you can collect these by killing people in the map. Uh, and I was never really sure how that happened, whether it was random or whether you had to do a particular challenge to get those Burn Cards. But some of the cards do allow you to activate. Um, in, in a game to reduce the countdown of your titan. It's quite useful if you need to get hold of one sooner rather than later or if you want to be the first person to get that titan. Some of you had asked about how the minions work and whether they're just simply ca cannon fodder or whether they're a little bit more capable than that. They are and these guys aren't particularly bright so they're not going to ever be that difficult to defeat, uh, but they are useful uh, in, in, as I've already mentioned, it, with, with the Titans you can reduce the countdown. So they, are, they are useful in a regard, uh, if you start a, a team deathmatch for example you're going to want to rush forward, you're going to want to hunt down as many of these, these fairly easy to kill AI. And previously Respawn said that uh, they like the, the inclusion of these minions because they make you feel powerful. Um, at the time it seemed uh, a bit throwaway, but it's very true, if you come across a squad of four and you just go around booting them in the face, it does feel like you're, you're, even though you know they're not very good, it does feel you're on top of your game. For the most part they are cannon fodder though, um, you're going to want to use them to get extra points and, and lower that, that titan countdown, so yeah, they're, they're not really anything to, just to sing home about, but yeah, they, they are pretty much cannon fodder. You probably expect customization and things like that in a, in a game made by the guys who make Call of Duty, uh, and there is some of that. Um, you can customize your, your both your pilot and the Titan that you you want to use. Um, in the beta, there weren't very many options. To be pilot, you can equip a selection of, of weapons, whether it's a sniper rifle, an SMG, a shotgun, or an assault rifle, and there weren't really many options available in that. We only got to play until about level 15. Uh, you didn't get many customizations options within that, but those weapons do have attachments that you can then add to those, presumably silencers, scopes, and things like that. Then you can add things, perks basically, you can add abilities that will make you better in some regard. This might be improvements to your uh, free running or, or various things like that. And then you can generally pick whether you want to be a male or a female. There's not really much more to it than that, um, but also you can customize your titans. Here it's fairly similar in, in the same regard to customizing the pilot in that you can choose what weapons you want to use, which secondary ability you have uh, and what kind of passive perk you want to use. It's hard to say right now how limited these options are because obviously it is only in beta. They probably will include a handful more. Uh, as it stands it is fairly limited but I don't believe that's going to be the case for the final game. 
weirdly some of you did ask about the story uh, this is obviously a multiplayer only game so if you're in it for the story you're probably going to want to play something else um, there is elements of it in there but through the beta it didn't really give you much of that um, I didn't see any of the cutscenes that they'd uh, promised in in the lobbies uh, so whether or not that's just something that they aren't including in the beta or not is hard to say uh, I can't imagine it's going to be a, a, a big focus for the game uh, this is multiplayer only game this is the reason you'd want to play it um, and because it's it's only multiplayer you're not going to have that opportunity to enjoy the story separate from from playing online One person did ask us about uh, whether or not the lack of the ability to shoot through walls, like in Call of Duty, is actually detriment to the gameplay. I never really considered it while playing, so I can't imagine it's, it's an issue, but since you do have these big lumbering titans, if you go inside a building and you're not safe, as a human, it's going to feel unfair. Uh, I think it's actually the, the, a wiser choice to, to limit that kind of gameplay. Uh, while it makes sense in, in Call of Duty, I don't think it makes the same sense here. Um, because for the humans, the, the buildings going inside those are kind of a safe haven. Um, so knowing that you might go in and still not be safe probably would make you not want to, to rely on that and, and probably make it unfair for the human players. Obviously the big question is graphics. So you can probably tell from the video um, for yourself just what you think of the graphics. Uh, we played on Xbox One, so you can kind of tell from that whether or not it's going to be something you want to play. I personally don't think it was that impressive. It does look a lot like Call of Duty Ghosts on next gen, uh, which isn't uh, <laughs> a lot of praise. Um, games like Battlefield 4 and Killzone out there, you, you kind of want to expect a bit more. I do think the Xbox 360 is holding it back a little bit. I um, wouldn't say the graphics are bad as, it, as such, but um, they're not exactly next gen. Part of that might be just the fact that they, they haven't had the opportunity or the time to, to build it for a next gen console. The most common question is probably the uh, the most obvious, but is it any good? Um, yes, I do think it is a good game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you have an Xbox One, I would highly recommend getting it. However, I played it for about three or four hours and at that point I do feel I'd, I'd experienced a lot of what Titanfall is going to be I can't imagine it's going it to change that much. At its very base it does feel like Call of Duty with mechs and while uh, Respawn probably don't want us to say that, it, it really is. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, a lot of people criticise Call of Duty these days um, but Call of Duty does er arena com combat really well and Titanfall does the same, it adds the, the mechs and it does do a little bit different. Uh, to distinguish itself but it does still have that same um, fast-paced element of combat to it and if you enjoyed Call of Duty you're going to enjoy this one. If however you don't have an Xbox One then I don't think it's going to particularly convince you to want to um, rush out and buy one. It is a good game, it's certainly worth getting but at the same time it doesn't feel like something that, that is new or, or different. Of course it doesn't help that it's also on PC and Xbox 360 so if you have either of those platforms you're going to have plenty of, of choices available to you anyway. As for who it appeals to, it is going to be more in the vein of Call of Duty for those fans who like a little bit more fast paced action. If you're into Battlefield and you prefer a more open map uh, with a lot more players, this isn't going to give you what you want here. It is only 6v6 and while that's not actually a negative point, although some of you might, might believe that's the case, um, it, it, it is limited enough that if you prefer something a little bit different, you're not going to get that here I'm afraid. But all the same, it is a lot of fun. There are a lot of really cool features here and really exciting moments such when you first summon in your first Titan or you jump out of a window knowing your 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 robot is there and he grabs you and stuffs him in he stuffs you in, in his chest. Uh, there's a lot of moments in in the game that are really built to to last and then make you make sure that you're gonna enjoy the game. You could boot it over half an hour or three hours and still have as much fun throughout that entire session as as you would any other day. But once you've played it quite a lot, you're not really going to get much more new out of it, at least from what I've played in the beta. 